So welcome to the U.S. Integrated Reporting Community. Uh, today we're really excited to have our, as our guest, Jamal Booker. Jamal's the Reporting Manager of the Global Public Affairs, Communications, and Sustainability Function at the Coca-Cola Company. And they're taking a really interesting path towards integration, and Jamal's going to share that with us today. So welcome, Jamal. Thank you so much for joining us. All right, thank you for having me. Happy to uh, share our story with you. Um, so thank you so much, everyone, for joining. We're really exciting to talk about the reporting journey we've been on, uh, in particular this year. Um, it's interesting to say on an integrated reporting uh, WebEx that we actually do not do an official uh, integrated report, but our approach to reporting is very much uh, integrated. Um, our business is certainly integrated as well, and so the way we report out is actually a report out on our integrated uh, business. So I'm going to walk you through our approach, um, but to begin, I wanted to tell you a little bit about how we approach stakeholder engagement. So we have a really strong stakeholder engagement process, which informs uh, the way we actually do reporting. So a few of the things that we've heard from our stakeholders, which, you know, is a broad uh, group, includes uh, NGOs, government officials, uh, investors, uh, the communities at large as well um, around the world. Um, the few things that they want to see, number one, how companies adjust to global trends that are going on and, and consumer trends. They want to see that uh, from sustainability reporting. Also, they want to see sustainability's connection to the business. So what's the direct connection between sustainability platforms and the business? Uh, they're really interested in local granularity. So what does uh, a sustainability program look like uh, in Latin America versus Asia? Uh, how is that different from the business and how does that connect back uh, to the business as well? And also, risk management so not just awareness of risk but how are you actually managing that risk as well so we take all of that input um, as factors into our reporting and and while i mentioned we do not call our report uh, or the way we report uh, an integrated report we're certainly familiar with all the different principles of integrated reporting uh, we review uh, tons of integrated reports to see what's out there. So a lot of the concepts that you'll see in our reporting are concepts that, you know, everyone on the WebEx is familiar with in terms of a concise report. Um, it demonstrates strategic thinking and, and integration as a business. It shows how we approach our risks and how we manage those as well. Um, and it also takes a look at how we look at our uh, priority issues. So I want to start by showing you a little bit of our reporting journey. Um, so I should have said at the beginning that I've been with the company since 2005, and I started in the reporting role in uh, January of last year. Um, so I wanted to share a few of the examples of our reporting from the last few years, just simply looking at the covers. So what I have up on the screen now is the uh, 2014 version of both our annual review and our sustainability report. So on the left, it's our annual review, which is more of our financial uh, annual review. And you can see it's obviously about the brands that we have there um, on the left. On the right, it's our sustainability report cover, which is more about the environment. Um, and also in 2015 here, again, a similar theme on the left, you can see uh, it's about our brand, and on the right, it's about our women's empowerment program, which is a really big sustainability focus area for us. And then last year as well, you can see the annual review cover on the left is all about our brands, and on the right, you can see clearly uh, the sustainability report, uh, the cover is focused on the environment. So as we took a look at this uh, this year, you know, we thought to ourselves that it didn't really reflect the integration of our business. So sustainability is really integrated throughout all the different levels of our business um, with our bottling partners um, all around the world, local at country levels, sustainability decisions are being made and it's taken as a consideration on the ground level where we do business. So 
it wasn't telling the story that we actually have, which is how we create shared opportunity through our growth. So it's not growth on the left side and sustainability on the right, but it's really the connection of those two and how we create shared opportunity through growth. So our approach for reporting this year um, in our two reports was to actually bring the stories together so that they tell a more cohesive story. So it's no longer, even in terms of design, uh, separate designs, um, and even in terms of authorship, uh, we selected one writer to write both reports as well. So we brought those together for the first time to make sure we told a holistic story that was directly connected uh, between our growth and sustainability. Um, so you can see on the left, it's the annual review cover. And, you know, as consumers are moving to uh, search for different beverages, different types of beverages, uh, we also um, have made a strategic decision to be more of a total beverage company. Um, so we're offering a wide variety of different types of products, more waters, more juices, more teas, uh, reducing sugar in a lot of the beverages that we've always produced. So we're becoming more of a total beverage company uh, as consumers uh, start to look for additional beverage options as well which connects directly to the sustainability of our business in the first place. And then on the right, you see the cover of the sustainability report, which is uh, really a nod to um, the packages as well. So on the left, you'll see all the different packages that we have, but we also announced a, a really huge uh, aspiration around world without waste. So we know that the world has a packaging issue, um, our aspiration is by 2030, we want to collect and recycle every, the equivalent of a bottling or a can for everyone that we actually put into the market. So even the covers uh, in the design phase actually tell the story that we want to tell. It's not just growth on the one side, but how does that growth sort of impact the environment and what can we do? So. The way we approached our reporting this year was sort of a chapter one and chapter two approach, the annual review and the sustainability report. So what I'll bring up is sort of the connective tissue that connects both reports. Um, this is the first thing that we actually created, um, which is our value chain. So we created this uh, this year because we wanted to tell, again, the cohesive story. We wanted to make the shift from just sort of talking about in our reporting um, what we're doing in terms of a uh, growth standpoint and sustainability, but how is it all connected? And this is the value creation story that we wanted to tell. So as we grow, we have opportunities to create shared opportunity and shared value for everyone in our um, value chain. And it all is centered in the middle around uh, people and community. So it starts with us understanding what people, what beverages people want to drink in the first place. So as we understand, people are looking to control the amount of sugar they drink, et cetera. So even the beverages that we create have people at the center. Uh, in order to get the ingredients, et cetera, there are farmers that we work with. So we look at the value chain holistically, and as I hover over any of these, for example, water, what we did is we set this up so uh, anyone could have an understanding of our value chain in terms of why water is important for communities, how we approach it, and also why it's important for our business. So for example, in the top, uh, it says environment, environmental and social impact, you know, our water stewardship efforts, our focus where we can have the greatest impact. So we try to help sustain communities by helping provide water access for communities in need. And then below that, you can see our business approach um, where it says as a global leader in the beverage industry, water quality and availability are vital to our business. Water is the primary ingredient in nearly all of our products. So again, it's not just uh, the uh, in terms of what are we doing for communities, but why is it important to us and why do we value it um, as a business? 
again, if you go down uh, to the customers portion here, you can see in terms of economic impact, environmental impact, so and social impact, anywhere you buy a Coke in the world, you buy it either at a restaurant, a gas station, a, a customer outlet, and our customers are those who buy Coke from us in order to sell it to consumers. Um, so our products help create economic growth in any market in the world, any country in the world. It's produced locally and it produces um, an opportunity for uh, customers to actually you know, generate income and create uh, jobs as well. So this value chain also looks at the SDGs that are touched at every point along our value chain. So we communicate that through this as well. So this was the connective tissue, <coughs> excuse me, that connected our annual review and our sustainability report um, to clearly show our total um, holistic value creation story. So what I'll do next is actually walk you through sort of our chapter one of our reporting year, which is our annual review. So this is the cover of the annual review. And as we go through, again, the message here is we are a total beverage company. Um, as consumers are moving to different beverages, we are providing them, again, getting back to the sustainability of our operations. And here we have our chairman's letter, which is all about value creation. So as we grow, we create more value for our partners, uh, whether those be, again, suppliers that we have, ingredient suppliers, uh, women entrepreneurs that we work with to give them opportunities to uh, help uh, sell our products, but also learn uh, and get broader business opportunities as well. And then our CEO's letter is how we continue to build upon our brand and the things that we're doing to become a total beverage company. And in terms of the highlights for the year, um, you can see again um, in the top right, uh, Coca-Cola Zero Sugar, so a big push around diets and lights, uh, really big uh, in terms of a sustainability of the business push. And then in the bottom, you can also see plant-based beverages. So many different types of beverages uh, that consumers are moving to. So these are some of the highlights of the business. Um, and you can also see uh, right in line with the highlights of the business, uh, 2017 was a, sort of a tragic year in terms of uh, disaster. So you had earthquakes, you had uh, hurricanes as well. So we talked about what we did um, in terms of disaster relief as well. So you can get a Coke essentially anywhere in the world in any local community. So we see it as really important to be part of those communities and really support those communities in times of need. In the bottom left, you can also see about our safe water access program that we launched in 2017 in Latin America. And then there's more on sustainability and social impact. And I'll point all of this out to say, this is traditionally our annual report, which uh, of course is focused on growth, is focused on financials, but what we did this year is intentionally made about 40% of the content in our annual report sustainability content that was related to our business. So that was really intentional. And then in the sustainability report, uh, which you'll see is about 40% of the content in the sustainability report is what you would think of as traditional business content or content that you would traditionally see in an annual report. So we set that up uh, intentionally so that it was to the point where it didn't matter whether it was a business focused story or a related sustainability story. It didn't matter if it was in the annual review or the sustainability report because they're really a part of the same story, chapter one and chapter two. And really, the, the uh, decision was made as to where it landed, just basically based on the time and whether we had the data in time for the annual review or the sustainability report. So our sustainability report came out last year um, around August, and our annual report came out around April. And so some of the data uh, kind of lags a little bit. But in terms of a holistic and integrated conversation, 
uh, it no longer matters to us where those conversations fall because they're all related. Um, so again, we're reimagining what's possible. Uh, this first article, um, main headline in the annual review was all around our reformulation um, activity and our move to a total beverage company. So you can see uh, it's essentially about our portfolio. So you can see it says here, we reduce sugar in more than 300 of our drinks globally um, while coming out with uh, 500 new products. So again, it's all about the different products we have. So we launched this story in the annual report, but also you'll notice in our sustainability report, uh, we point back to the same story. Um, so this is the first time we've had the same article referred to um, both from the annual report and the sustainability report. Again, it's just showing sort of the integration of the business um, and sustainability. And let me turn the light back on in the conference room. <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, that was sort of an integration point uh, right there. And so now I will walk through uh, the sustainability report as well, uh, which came out last August. And so here, again, on the second page uh, at this part, which sort of describes the cover, um, it again points back to uh, the annual review. So it says, our sustainability report tells only part of our story. Its companion piece is the 2017 annual review. Our growth and our environmental and social impact stories are interconnected, and the covers re uh, reflect this. And we have a direct link right there to our annual review, which would link back um, to the AR. So last year when I put together the sustainability report, it essentially started with our sustainability platform. But as we wanted to have a more integrated look in this year's reporting, we actually started our sustainability report with just a straight uh, business overview. So it started with who we are as a business. So you can see who we are, how many brands we have, et cetera, what our global reach looks like, how many people we have, et cetera, to really ground um, the reader in the business. Again, our value chain, which was also in the annual review, the connective tissue between uh, both reports, we wanted to re-emphasize that as well. And this link takes you directly to the interactive value chain with the SDGs on the website. Um, and then, of course, the letter from our CEO and CSO. Um, so what we did is we actually combined the letter, um, again, to reemphasize the point that there's, there's not sort of one message uh, from the CEO and the CSO, but they really work together. Um, and the messages are uh, together for the business. So it's all really integrated. Um, this is a really important page as well. So before we even got to our sustainability priorities, these are the five uh, strategic business priorities here on this page. So this is what our CEO presents externally. This is what our investor relations team presents externally. These five priorities are the strategic priorities of the business. So in order to make a direct connection from these to sustainability, we took a look at each priority and we identified a story that had a strong sustainability connection to that priority. And I'll just point out two examples. Um, the first one is uh, accelerate the growth of the leading uh, consumer-centric brand portfolio. So that's all about, again, making the shift to a total beverage company and you know we'll have different drinks use different ingredients etc so the article here that we showed to make the sustainability connection was about the launch of fused tea in europe um, which was planned for in 2017 it actually launched in january of 2018 uh, it was one of the biggest product launches in the company's history 
And so with tea, uh, naturally, we need to make sure we have a sustainable supply chain for tea because we're all about growth in this category, and it's a new um, launch of tea across all of Europe. So what the brand team did and the supply chain team is they worked really hard to make sure we had a more sustainable supply chain of tea to prepare for the growth, um, which is the business growth that um, we're shooting for. And so we did an interview with the brand manager of Fuse Tea, and she details all the work that was done with the supply chain and the ag team in order to make this uh, brand launch successful. And just to sum it up here, you can see her quote, which is highlighted, we aim to help change, change farmers' lives at scale. So again, it gets back to the idea that as we grow, we create more value and opportunities for farmers in our supply chain, for our customers as well. So that's one example that tied directly back um, to the business priorities. And I'll just show you the second one as well. So how do we drive our revenue growth is um, another priority. So for that one, we did an article specifically about um, how we approach uh, value over volume. So just to explain that a little bit, traditionally when people cover uh, the beverage industry, um, essentially they, they review how much volume did a company move? So how much liquid essentially did a company sell? Our CEO, uh, James Quincy, has really shifted the conversation uh, for us in our strategy from one of value and selling more, I'm sorry, from one of volume and selling more volume to one of value. So again, when it gets back to value creation, it's not that we want to sell more volume, but even how do we make more value for our customers? So for example, this article is all about as consumers are starting to uh, reach for packages that have uh, less sugar, and sort of smaller packages instead of bigger packages, how do we make those available for customers because that will help customers make more money as well. So as customers need to provide what consumers are actually looking for, uh, even though the packages are smaller, it provides more value for our customers. So it's a whole shift uh, from volume to value and it helps everyone along our value chain actually make more money and have greater opportunities. So again, another example of how our business strategy connects directly to sustainability and where consumers are moving in terms of beverages. So again, for the other priorities, there are articles under there as well that line up directly with sustainability. Um, and importantly, um, we, of course, have a priority issue analysis, which is linked to from page seven here. And we listed out all of the different topics in our priority issue analysis. Um, a lot of those same topics are also noted in our 10K as well, which is linked from here directly. So again, looking at the issues and the risks for the business and how it ties to sustainability, we lay all that out here in the middle, you can see our approach. So how are we managing the topics and the concerns um, that are here? Uh, in the middle, you can see our approach. And on the right, you can see the updates for 2017 in terms of what we did. So for example, as I pointed out earlier, uh, water is one of the main ingredients of all of our um, products. Um, so we are really, uh, careful about how we use our water. We try to use our water as efficiently as possible. And we also replenish uh, to communities an equal amount of uh, water that we use in the production. So directly from there, so you see sort of what the topic is, how we approach it. And then if you link here, it gives an update uh, for 2017 for you know what we did, how we're managing the risk, and what we did for communities as well. Um, so you can see the foundation of our water stewardship work is our risk mitigation strategy. It shows how much water we actually return to communities here, and it goes all the way through to how we're trying to help uh, manage the water use in our agriculture 
uh, supply chain as well. So direct connection to, uh, you know, from what the topic is, how we approach it, and what the update is. And so from there, it's pretty much a concise report that's got the updates for every topic for us. Um, from every page, uh, there's a link to uh, the 2017 update. And again, in terms of risk mitigation and how we look at uh, management, this is the climate page. So uh, this shows a little bit about how we are managing our risk in terms of the climate space. I know everybody on the WebEx is familiar with uh, TCFD. So this is a resilience um, study that we did. We looked at you know, our supply chain in about seven countries. And also we looked at our supply chain in terms of tea and coffee and looked at the risks um, in terms of climate and the different opportunities that are there as well. So a lot of work uh, went into how we look at managing sort of the climate risk. So that's there, which is really important for the business, especially as we talk about, again, moving in the different categories. So accelerating our growth in teas and coffees, uh, which is part of our growth strategy. Uh, but this is the connection to that on the sustainability so side. And lastly, what I wanted to show was uh, the map. So another thing that we heard from our stakeholders is they want to see the levels of local granularity. So how are our sustainability programs different in North America versus Africa? So we actually took uh, two approaches to this. Um, we wanted to make sure that we emphasize the fact that uh, our group presidents, our business unit presidents, the leadership of the company, and not just the folks that were responsible for sustainability and supply chain and technical um, were able to sort of provide their views on sustainability. So we really wanted to elevate the voice of business leaders on sustainability. Um, so we work directly with our group offices. So our entire organization is um, split up into four different groups. So you've got uh, Asia Pacific, uh, Europe, Middle East and Africa, Latin America and North America. So we actually work with the group president offices for each of those different groups to sort of understand what their view of sustainability was and what the highlights were uh, for the previous year in sustainability. So just for example, uh, in Asia Pacific, um, so John Murphy, who was uh, president of Asia Pacific at the time, actually wrote an article about sustainability in Asia Pacific. And I think it's really uh, key to point that out because it's not, you know, we didn't just work with the sustainability director. Um, so again, with a lot of the countries in Asia Pacific um, having a big role to play in um, our world without waste work. So how do we set up infrastructure um, for packaging collection? Uh, one of the things, you know, he said is our company's world without waste goal uh, could be perhaps more important in uh, Asia Pacific because that's where regionally a lot of the issue is. So we wanted to kind of show stakeholders that we're focused on these uh, issues at a really local level. So this is not, um, again, just Atlanta sort of making the calls, but we expect our business unit presidents, our group presidents to have an idea of what's going on in sustainability. So that's one thing. Um, each group president has an article about sustainability from their region there. And we also created a sustainability map, um, which kind of gives highlights of many different sustainability projects around the globe. Um, all across the Coca-Cola system and some of our priority topic areas, so water, women, packaging, and on from there as well. And if you click in, you can see what's going on at a local level. And of course, it's not exhaustive, but it has a good number of different projects. Uh, this is just one from Egypt that I clicked on, and this project talks about increasing access to safe water for communities in Upper Egypt. So again, that's not a decision that was made in Atlanta. This is the Coca-Cola company and our Coca-Cola bottlers 
working with partners in Egypt. Um, so at a local level, uh, making those decisions for the business. So again, we just wanted to emphasize that this is integrated throughout different levels of our organization and really showcase how it, it actually looks on the map there. So that was a big uh, effort that we had as well. All right, so that's what I wanted to share uh, today on our uh, journey and our approach to reporting on our integrated business. And I'm happy to take any questions. Great. Well, thanks so much, Jamal. That was amazing. And I know we already have a ton of questions. For those who are just watching the video, please join us for these regular programs so that you can participate in the questions and get access to great people like Jamal. And uh, for those on the, on the line, if you just hang on one second, I'm going to turn off the video and we'll get started with the discussion portion.